And let's talk about it. I was talking about the United Airlines thing with the dog. Okay, I'm not, I can't, I'm not going to go into it in great detail because it's wildly triggering for me. And I was actually in the video that I put up, I was actually talking about how triggered I was and how people had the story in their posts on Facebook and they showed up in my feed and some of the, I stutter, it bothers me. Some of these posts just showed a plane, but some of the posts actually showed the animal and it was just like such a huge energetic impact to me that I couldn't deal with it. It makes me feel like I'm going to choke if I see a wounded animal or somebody being awful to an animal. And I, I remember being six years old, swimming in a pool with some tourist in, who was visiting Hawaii and telling them that I cared much more about people being mean to animals than people being mean to people. And it was just a sensibility that I had ever since I was a kid. And of course, I love people and care about people, but I've always had an elevated uh, connection to animals. And this didn't, I didn't come by this honestly, actually, because my father was a typical paniolo, which is a typical kind of cowboy in Hawaii. Like he, animals were service animals. They were there to do something. And we had beautiful dogs. We had Akitas. But they were always chained up outside. And they were always outside. And I would love them and I'd go play with them and they were such noble and gorgeous animals. But my dad didn't have a sensibility that like, hey, maybe they wanted to be with the family or maybe they wanted to be indoors. And we had pigs and we had cows and we had all these beautiful animals, but my dad just didn't see it that way. And so I grew up that way. So I have a sensibility for animals that are unappreciated, right? And I don't know how my dad ever really was able to do that because he was also quite intuitive. How can you be intuitive and at the same time not understand that the Great Spirit animates all things, not just human beings and human minds? That's not the only thing God animates and breathes life into. God animates and breathes life into the trees and into the insects and into the dogs and the cats and the fish and the sea. Like all of this contains the great spirit. How can you have a surplus of one understanding, but like a lack of such a lack of other understanding? And as a child, I was made to witness bad things. So when I heard about the thing with United Airlines, huge, reverberating, big, neon, Las Vegas sign saying, you got work here, you got work here, because immediately I wanted to know who the hell that flight attendant was, I wanted the name, I wanted somebody to dox her, like I get all crazy, of course that's wrong, but this is exactly where I went, and when the thing went down with Cecil the Lion, forget about it, I was unlike myself for two whole weeks, I hated everybody, how can you kill this lion, what do you do? Who are, who am I? Why am I here with these people? Like, so crazy because of how, as a child, I was made to view animals. And it's been such a journey. My father, for reference, would fight chickens, cocks, cockfighting. My father, um, I'm not going to tell you, but, he, but that was his mentality. This is how I grew up. And in my late teens, early 20s, I moved out and had a cat, and I had a couple of cats. And then in my 30s, I, had, I started having dogs, and I also started to change my spirituality and the way that I thought about life. And I stopped living in a box of religion and rules, and I started to just try to feel things and feel what that felt like for me to experience them. And so I started to try to feel these animals, you know, animals that haven't been abused not neglected, they haven't been put through trauma, they're pure God, because they're unconditional love. And that's what God is. God is love. And if you allow yourself to be in the presence of animals, they will teach you about God. They will teach you about love. And slowly but surely, 
the animals that have come into and out of my life, some of them have been so long-suffering and patient with me because I just didn't know. I didn't know how to properly love an animal. I would never abuse an animal, but I just didn't know how to properly, like when you look at Trisha Carr, all of her cats are like just walking, like just curling up around her. I didn't know how to be with animals. But the animals taught me how to be with animals. The animals taught me how to be with animals. And so for me this week with the United Airlines thing, it was a huge invitation to do deeper work, to look at my relationship again with my father and how he conducted himself and how I have grown out of that. And also the thing with United Airlines that I am so heartened by is that we're pissed off. We're upset. This uproar that's happening in society as a result of what this person did is causing us all to raise our voice and say enough of corporate citizenship, enough of people disrespecting and dehumanizing people and pets and enough. Well, pets aren't human, but you know what? We've got to be humane, right? Enough of this culture of greed and enough of Enough of this in lack of connection to not understand something suffering or something needs you. Like, enough. We're tired of it. Why? Because I believe we are shifting. Yes, a lot of us are pissed. A lot of us are angry. We're in our emotions. But this is an evidency of things that are actually happening. We are shifting as a consciousness. This is no longer acceptable. Now, does this mean... We don't have corporations running amok and doing their thing. No, we have this for some time to come. But gone are the days, honestly. Gone are the days where the, the outliers, the yous and the me's, the little guys, don't have sufficient say. I actually said earlier today about United, a pox on their house. So Shakespearean. A pox on the... Pow. That's in Hawaii, that means finished. No more of that. Not only am I never going to patronize that corporation, it's not a person, I'm not going to do it, but no more of that. It doesn't fit in the earth that we're creating for ourselves, And that's the good news. And you know, some animals incarnate on this earth to teach us and to remind us and to embolden us to continue to shift. Cecil the lion was one of those great spirits. That puppy was one of those great spirits, came to embolden us to change it. This is no longer acceptable. Like, we're not putting up with it. I'm not going to buy your ticket. I'm not going to buy your product. I'm not going to do any. I, I'm going to stand for the energy <laughs> that I, I'm going to be the change that I seek to, that I want to see in the world. And that is what I learned from that debacle. So don't be disheartened by that ridiculous flight attendant and she's learning too y'all she's be you better believe she's learning right now don't be disheartened by the things that people do instead look at the reason why look at the path we're on because that's where the good news is